Well, good morning. It's wonderful to be at Camp Blanding. I'm happy to be joined by Dane Eagle, our DEO secretary, Jamal Sal, our CEO of Enterprise Florida. We also have Colonel Gray Johnson, Chief of Staff for the Florida National Guard. Uh, we have Stan Bozen, who's on the Florida Defense Support Task Force, retired U.S. Navy Rear Admiral. Uh, Harrison Conyers, who is the Military Affairs and Veterans Department Operations Manager for the City of Jacksonville. We have Representative Sam Garrison, Representative Bobby Payne, Senator Jen Bradley. Um, we've got uh, uh, Scotty Taylor, former uh, Fire Rescue City of Gainesville. Howard Wanamaker, County Manager for Clay County. Uh, Lauren Mock, Fire Chief and Deputy County Manager for Clay County. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Renninger and Condon, Commissioners Renninger and Condon from the Clay County Commission. And of course, we've got uh, a whole bunch of great uh, Florida National Guardsmen here, and we're happy to, uh, that they're here. We're happy we could make this announcement here at Camp Landing. We've uh, pride ourselves in Florida on being a very military and veteran friendly state. We have a huge veteran population, people that serve in the military, particularly in the Navy, since we have so many naval installations. Anytime they get stationed at one of our, our duty stations here in Florida, they tend to establish that Florida residency and they don't let it go. They keep it knowing that at a minimum they'll save on taxes throughout their career, but then almost always uh, wanting to come back and, and live in Florida at some point uh, after they, their, their military service has culminated. Uh, so we're proud of that. Uh, we're proud of all the people that uh, make our communities better who have military experience, uh, not just those who are fully retired, but even those who served uh, for, for a tour or two. We, we also are proud, and we are here actually in Northeast Florida last, last week to celebrate or to commemorate the service of folks who have uh, fought in war since September 11th. We had the 20th anniversary on Saturday. It was a really, uh, uh, you know, sad day to, to look back and, and, and look at the lives lost. Uh, but it also required us to reflect on the sacrifices that have been made by so many folks, certainly there that day on September 11th, all the first responders that rushed into the World Trade Center, also the passengers on flight, United Flight 93 who thwarted uh, an attack, most likely on Washington, D.C., knowing that they were uh, bringing the plane down and, and ensuring their own demise. Uh, but then all the people that have worn the uniform in the time since September 11th, uh, no draft, very small number of folks who've stepped up. Uh, many of them have done multiple combat deployments, and, and they've carried a lot of load for this country. Uh, so we certainly uh, thank them. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we're very supportive of making sure veterans have access to things like treatment for post-traumatic stress. And we've supported a lot of different initiatives, not just from the state of Florida, uh, but the private sector has been very good and military charities. And so, so we want to keep doing that as well. We are also very proud of the active duty uh, component uh, of the installations that we have. Of course, here at Camp Blanding is the heartbeat of the, of the Florida National Guard, which is a, a really amazing organization. I mean, they do a whole host of different things, and I know we have guys coming back from Louisiana who responded, uh, helped Louisiana respond to that hurricane. Of course, anytime we have storms here in the state of Florida, the Guard is, is ready to go, and they're very, very helpful. The Guard has done an enormous amount of stuff. Uh, since, uh, since COVID started, uh, we, we sent them very early on uh, to help protect nursing homes, help to uh, test the, the elderly residents. They played a huge role in vaccine distribution. And um, uh, anytime we need, uh, need help, uh, they're there for, for that. So, so very um, uh, appreciated, I think, organization in Florida, but particularly for all the different things that they've done. And then, of course, we've got some great military installations throughout our state uh, here in northeast florida uh, we've got uh, fantastic installations you look at northwest florida you look at the tampa bay area look at all the way down to the keys with the nas down there so we're proud of that we're proud that a lot of active duty members are here working in florida and we believe having a strong active duty component uh, is not only something we're proud of just from a patriotic perspective, but it's also good for our communities. I mean, when you have strong bases that has a, a really positive economic impact in the surrounding areas. And so in Florida, we really want to help support that. We want to make sure that folks are 
uh, that these communities are, are really able to, to benefit and that we can work in, in concert when, when appropriate with, with, uh, with the military services um, to make sure that we have the, the appropriate infrastructure in place so that uh, they have great um, uh, footprint here for themselves, but then we also can capitalize on that uh, and help benefit our community. So today, you know, I'm happy to announce that the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity and Enterprise Florida are awarding $3.4 million for military communities and bases across the state through the Defense Infrastructure Grant Program, the Defense Reinvestment Grant Program, and the Florida Defense, the For, the, uh, Defense Support Task Force Grant Program. Most of uh, that money uh, will be in Northeast Florida and Northwest Florida where we have such heavy installations presence for northeast florida we're doing almost a million dollars for clay county to provide a buffer area around camp blanding to maintain facilities at camp blanding and to help develop a strategic sites inventory for future development nearly a half a million dollars to the city of jacksonville uh, to jointly acquire restrictive use easements of property in the military influence zone at naval air station jacksonville and uh, almost $100,000 to the city of Jacksonville to continue efforts to bring shipbuilding and maintenance plans to Naval Station Mayport and work towards the, the goal of hosting a nuclear aircraft carrier uh, in the Jacksonville region once again. Uh, here at Camp Blanding, of course, this is the, the main site for Florida's National Guard. It's important that its security uh, be maintained. Uh, we want to prevent encroaching uh, development that could uh, undermine that perimeter. Uh, this is uh, a site that was used all the way back in World War II. Um, it really does have a, a storied history. We want to maintain its upkeep, and this, uh, this investment will really help meet both of those needs, and so we're really excited about it. Uh, the National Guard is always someone we call on and can depend on, um, and we want to make sure that, uh, that, that, this, uh, that this base is in, is in good stead, uh, so we're going to continue to do that. Uh, we do think that if you look around, uh, particularly in Jacksonville and other parts of Northeast Florida. Um, you know, this will have, of course, benefits uh, for the broader region, uh, but of course, some of the, the money de dedicated to the city um, is going to help buttress our efforts. And uh, there's not very many places around the country that could, that could credibly argue uh, with Jacksonville and Northeast Florida arrival them in terms of uh, military friendliness. And so we think this is a really critical part of the DNA of this part of the state, and we're happy to be able to continue to help. So we're going to continue. We did in the budget last year that I signed, I mean, we had $20 million uh, for military members, family, retirees across a whole host of different programs. We also, for the first time, uh, expanded our school choice offerings to uh, basically uh, streamline in military families uh, who are who are active duty and have school aged children. So we're really happy to be able to do that. This is a huge economic impact to the state, not just the active duty component, but as many of you know, the the industrial component uh, that, that goes into that. We have some phenomenal industrial components that, that are in Florida. Uh, there's been more that have moved from other parts of the country to Florida, and that those are really good jobs, and they obviously play an important mission in maintaining America's security. So, so we're excited about doing that. I want to thank the legislature for, for their support uh, over the years, and of course this year uh, for uh, these missions. And um, you know, we're going to end up, we're going to have some folks come up and, and say a few words about it, but uh, I think that uh, our legislature overwhelmingly uh, hugely supportive of our military communities, our installations, our active duty component, and our veterans. And that's not true in every state, but it's definitely true here. So we're going to have Colonel Johnson uh, come up and speak, uh, Chief of Staff at the Florida National Guard. So come on up. Thanks, sir. Yep. Well, welcome to Camp Landing. Uh, like the governor mentioned, uh, we've been training the nation's warfighters here at Camp Landing since 1939. And we feel we do a pretty good job, and these grants that the governor mentioned are going to allow us to continue to do that as, as we move forward. Uh, reinvestments such as those provided by the Defense Infrastructure Grants and the Defense Reinvestment Grants will enable us to continue offering superior training opportunities and, and also strengthen our relationships with the local communities, especially here in Clay County as Camp Landing is located in Camp Landing, uh, Camp Landing uh, Clay County. Excuse me. This year alone, Camp Landing will receive, like the governor mentioned, almost 900000 Dollars, which we will use to maintain and modernize our facilities here at Camp Blanding, buffer the installation from uh, incompatible land development. Uh, we're so grateful to Governor DeSantis 
Mr. Continue support of Florida's uh, military, sir, and, and as well as our military communities, and uh, for all that you do to ensure that, that Florida is the most military-friendly uh, state in the nation. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, we have uh, Representative Bobby Payne. Thank you, Governor, and, and thank you for your military service as well. We'd be remiss if we didn't recognize that. Certainly your services, Congressman, and uh, your leadership as our, as our governor. Jamal and uh, Dane, thank you for being here as well. Communities are, awarded, uh, are being awarded about $1.6 million in funding through the Defense Infrastructure Grant Program to include Clay County Development Authority at $300,000 to provide maintenance facilities in uh, Camp Landing Joint Training Center. Additionally, communities are awarded about $800,000 in funding through the Defense Reinvestment Grant Program to include Clay County Economic Development Corporation, $65,000 develop a strategic site inventory program which would catalog shovel-ready sites as part of the development along the First Coast Express project in Clay County. Funding would also be used to create an interactive GIS mapping and analysis application for these sites. And finally, communities awarded $1 million for funding through development or through the Florida Defense Support Task Force grant program to include Clay County at $500,000 defense grant buffering Camp Landing from incompatible land development. Camp Landing uh, trains over 350,000 Florida National Guard troops, active duty military, and law enforcement units. So, Governor and, and members, uh, we're so happy that you're here today to announce those exciting programs. Thank you, All Governor. Right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we will have uh, Jamal Sal, Enterprise Florida. Everyone, so you've heard the details, but the reason why that's important is because when the investment that the governor has made is showing the world that uh, veterans, those who are reservists, those in the National Guard and active duty, are, know that they have a place to come home. In regards to training, this shows the entire world that we want to invest in our military sites because Florida is a very military-friendly state. So from his time in Iraq and my time in Afghanistan in the Marine Corps, uh, one thing that we learned before we deployed, we, we learned uh, that training was key. We did immediate action drills, because every time you did the drills, every time you did that, that was for a reason. So when that time came in the war where something happened, you knew what to do. The soldiers on your left and right knew what to do. And this investment is an investment in the entire state, but also for the job that will come and for the training and for the veterans and for the reservists and guardsmen who want to make Florida home. Thank you. We have uh, also with us uh, Dane Eagle, Department of Economic Opportunity. Well, I want to thank the governor for his focus on our military installations. As he just announced moments ago, 3.4 million across the state of Florida. And the bulk of that, nearly 2 million, is right here in northeast Florida with 800,000 at Camp Landing. Uh, and notably, you might sometimes see these grants coming from Department of Veterans Affairs, Department of Military Affairs, but this is an economic development announcement today, which is why myself and Secretary Sowell are here to highlight how important this is to job creation in communities like this. Clay County, small but mighty, what they're doing for our military installations, our military uh, uh, veterans, uh, and beyond uh, is so important to this community in Northeast Florida as a whole. Uh, and I want to thank them for their commitment, but most importantly, the governor's commitment to highlighting Florida as one of the, the most, if not the most, and I challenge other states to try to claim it, the most military-friendly state in the nation. We'll continue to push forward and continue to propose these grants. Thank you to the legislature, as uh, represented by the stellar uh, Clay County delegation, for, for advocating for these funds. And thank you once again to our governor and our military for making this state so great. Appreciate your time today. I also want to thank uh, members of the Defense Support Task Force uh, for, for, for what they've been doing. And I also want to thank uh, both Dane and Jamal for, for recognizing when we do economic development, obviously the bread and butter is some company comes or some company expands and you do. And that's, that's of course, important. But uh, there, there are also other ways where you know, we can have development. And this is one way in terms of our military installations. And quite frankly, one of the, the best recruiting we're doing now is with law enforcement, too. Uh, we're we're going to do $5,000 bonuses for all police who come 
from uh, out of state or new folks to law enforcement who, who are within Florida, uh, that's going to have a huge cascading effect as really making Florida the place to be uh, for folks who are, who are pursuing that profession. So I think from a veteran's perspective, from a first responder perspective, and then just from an overall jobs perspective, uh, we really are a great landing spot for a lot of folks. I think you're going to continue to see uh, this place be a place that's going to attract veterans when they retire. And uh, I think our state's going to be much better for it. So this is a good announcement today, and I think it's going to help uh, help the communities up here in Northeast Florida quite a bit. And this is just uh, one of many things we're doing. We're going to we're going to continue to be there. We're looking forward to to doing the the next legislative session and probably being able to deliver some more. Certainly on infrastructure, we will do that. And it's certainly easier going into those sessions when you have uh, strong budget reserves and really have had strong economic performance, which we've had. So we want to keep that going. Okay, with that, I could take a couple questions. Questions. So it's going to be right. So 3.4 million total, 865,000 uh, for Clay County and Camp Blanding, 450,000 for the city of Jacksonville uh, for um, the Eastmans. And then 90,000 for city of Jacksonville uh, for shipbuilding, maintenance, and uh, long-term long-term planning. All right. Well, we appreciate it very much. We look forward to coming back. I, as somebody who served uh, on active duty at Naval Station Mayport uh, and then did a lot of time at NAS Jacksonville as well, uh, those are both uh, installations that are close to my art. And of course, now. As commander in chief of the Florida National Guard, uh, Blanding, uh, Camp Blanding is a very important part uh, for, for me and for the state of Florida. And uh, you know, you hope to not have to deal with with things. You want to just let things, you know, nice, tranquil. But things happen. Storms happen. Other things happen. And and any time we're facing a, a situation like that, these National Guardsmen are the are the first ones that that we call upon uh, to be there for us. So. Just from, uh, from me as governor, I just want to thank them for their service. We appreciate what you do. We understand there have been, uh, there've been a, a, lot of, uh, a lot asked of you, particularly over the last couple years, uh, and, and hopefully we'll end up having a, um, a modest rest of the hurricane season, but we are prepared, and we always got to be prepared, and we know you guys will be there uh, if duty calls. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon.